You can watch me when I fall, when I cry, when I get shot, when I go to jail, when I die. You can watch. Your homie Gab is in the building. Check out my exclusive interview with one of my favorite artists of all times, the legendary Mr. Ishmael Butler, a.k.a. Butterfly from Diggable Planets. Yeah. Just see the junkie rhythms right down your block. We beat to rap what he beat to lock, but I'm cool like that. Yo, what's poppin'? It's Ishmael Butler from Diggable Planets and Shabazz Palaces. You know I'm rockin' with my man Gab. Machiavelli Media. Tap in, baby. I ain't a killer, but don't push me. Revenge is like the sweetest joy next to getting pussy. Picture paragraphs unloaded. Wise words being quoted. Keep the weakness in the rap game. We showed it. Come on, baby. <laughs> ah, man, the dope, baby. God, what's the word, baby, bro? How you living, man? And you out there in B-more. Um, that's a beloved city to me. Me and my pop lived out there for a long time, man, so... You know, I really, I really love it out there too, bro. You know? Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, you were telling me West Baltimore, man. I'm from East Baltimore. Yeah, yeah I was over there off of uh, Fremont Avenue, Landville Street, uh, Robert C. Rec Center. You know, Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, yeah, man. No doubt, man. That's awesome, man. I would have never knew that. You know, what I mean, my dude Butterfly was here. In Baltimore <laughs> City the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so you, got, yeah. you got a you got a pretty interesting background. Let's get into that, man. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Oh shit! Uh, my 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 parents, Barbara and Reginald, they met out in Washington State, Seattle, Washington, and um, that's where I was born. And then after they split up, my poppy went back to uh, the East Coast, Philly. So I split time, you know, being with each one of my parents and uh. Being on the east and the west coast, and and Philly is where um I met knowledge from Diggable Planets, and um he was friends with Mecca, who's from the D.C. area, cause knowledge went to um Howard University, so um right. we was uh, in our early twenties, uh and we got together in Philly on some rap shit, just like loving rap. He had group, I had a group, so uh we ended up joining forces and um. Came up with Diggable Planets in uh, the late 80s, early 90s. And then um, that's how it was. We was rocking from there. Well, you, so did you go to the school too or you was just like around the college scene? How did that work out? Yeah, I went to University of Massachusetts. But at that time when I met uh, the guard, see, I had dropped out of school and I was living in Philly. So at that time, you know, you know, people got up and down the eastern seaboard, Philly, New York, D.C., Baltimore, uh, Virginia, going to things like uh, Howard Homecoming, Penn Relays, Eastern Parkway Parade, all that. Everybody was just trooping up and down the east coast like that, kicking it at the different events. So that's how I got around all that stuff. You know, I mean, you got Doodoo Bug, you got Ladybug with you, and all of a sudden the rebirth of Slick hit. Cool like yeah. that. Yeah. He beat to lock, but I'm cool like that. I'm cool like that. Did you have any idea you gonna take off and get national attention that it got? Nah, nah. Cause you know back then wasn't no internet, wasn't no YouTube, so it was just rare that you even got a chance to get a record deal. And then those that got record deals, it was it was hard to get recognized and get attention and you know what I'm saying, quote, unquote, blow up or catch a hit or something. So it caught us off guard. You know, we believed in our music and stuff, but it was just rare that you caught a hit like that back then. So it was a big surprise, bro. I mean, shit was everywhere. It was major. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. all in yeah. the streets, in the college dorms, in the clubs, yeah. on yeah. commercials. Yeah. You know, when did you bag Coco? Like, yeah, so, um, um, so Coco, that's Cheryl Gamble from SWV. That's my son Jazz's mother. So we met at a, um, a celebrity type basketball game in Brooklyn. And I was playing in the game. And I think, I think SWV had either sponsored the game or something like that. But I was living in BK, not far from, from that gym, which was like downtown on, on Flatbush. So, I'm I was I'm I'm into hoop. So I went to the game and um 
I always was fond of her, you know what I'm saying? I liked the way she sounded. I liked her look and everything like that. Then when I saw her, she was looking good in person and everything like that. So you know how it go, man. You know, just start talking and, <laughs> and hit it off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, man, and for the people that don't know, man, you had a hell of a seed with her, too, man. You got Lil Tracy, man. That's Now, that's why your son, man, is a star. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah. He, um, my son Jazz go by Lil Tracy in the rap game. He, he's a cult. He, he, he always was very, like, um, like, I'd be in the studio doing something, and he would come in there and sit down, and, and, like, a lot of kids might get, bored or turned off at the technicalities of things but he was always in it for the long haul and showed a lot of interest and then like he would pick up my guitar and just sit with it and he basically taught himself how to play and produce music and all that and stuff like that so i seen at an early age he was inclined to, to to really do it and then when he got out of of age and got out in the world and started doing his dance he just really was coming with different little innovations and different little styles that a lot of cats was getting on to, you know, on the SoundCloud and all that. And he really, really grew his bass. And then when he started rocking with, um, with Pete, you know, he, um, they started putting together collaborations that was just blowing and like, like crazy, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, my son, man, he's, he's a fly kid, man, really down to earth dude, you know what I'm saying? Like to have fun, imagine it, imaginative, and a real cool cat, man. I'm very proud of him. Me and his sisters, you know, we all we all support him and really love what he's doing. You know what I mean? And his Definitely, mother. Man. He, got, he got a lot of flavor, man. We come from good stock. Man, you also right got on. a brother that was in the hip-hop scene, right? In Champ Well, Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's not my physical brother. My physical brothers is uh, Omar from Philly and Al from uh, San Diego, but my brother Camp Low, um, he <laughs> That's my man. You know? Wait, he's right, Bronx. right. Yeah, yeah. So them is my guys. I've been knowing them since back in them days too. They still doing their thing uh, individually and together. We we actually went on tour. They came out with Diggable a couple of years ago, and we did a tour around the state. So yeah, shout out Camp Low. They they, they fly. You already know, man. You know. Oh man, definitely, man. Lucini, <laughs> you know what I mean. Falling from the sky, man. Come Falling on. from the sky. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, but brother, man, so let's get into Tupac, man. What did, what did Tupac mean to you coming out as an artist around the same time as a brother like Tupac and being poetic like Tupac? And, you know, just having the whole revolutionary vibe and a lot of your music was informative more than just hip-hop, more than just street. You had, you know, conscious efforts in your music. What did Tupac mean to you as an artist? Yeah, well, to be <clears throat> to be around when Pac was living, you know what I mean, and, and making his rise through the culture and the rap game, from seeing him dancing, you know, because cats got to remember, like, um, Digital Underground, they, they, they shook a nation too, you know what I'm saying? So you, all of us that was really in the rap and into all the videos and shit like that, we already seeing this nigga, like, dancing with him and this and this and that. So then he, when he came from dancing to rapping and on his first album, you know what I'm saying, he had a vibe that was like kind of like Ice Cube, you know, that West Coast kind of sound to it. And just to see him growing into his different styles and flavors and, you know, running into him here and there all, over those years, he was just like a electrifying cat, you know what I'm saying? Every time he was around, the air was just sizzling, you know what I'm saying, pop around, you know what I mean? And he was always, you know, had that smile and was just a live firecracker type of cat. So um, it was cool just to, you know, now looking back on it and you look back on the history and, 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 and all that happened to realize that you was around when a cat like that was around and, and got to see him and interact with him a little bit here and there. It's, it's just special, man, because he was a, a zenith, you know what I mean? He was he was just a shooting star, you know? So, Butter, when was the first time you physically ever met Tupac? What was that like? <clears throat> I met, I've seen him a bunch of times. I don't remember actual the actual time sequence of it, but the first time I remember ever kicking it with him was in uh, D.C., actually. It was at a club we had went to after a show, and Mad Niggas was in there, Pac was in there, Fife was in there, Q-Tip, and it was a live D.C. club, so you already know how D.C. give it up, you know what I mean? So it was just a great night. 
Yeah, come on, man. You already know. So it was a great mm-hmm. night, and we was in there doing our thing. It was getting late, and all of a sudden, like, you just heard, like, you know what I'm saying, a little, little ruckus and shit coming through, and then it was Pop and whoever he was with that night. And um, I don't know if it was Money B or some other cats, but, you know, he was there, and, I, and, and you know, we was excited to see him. And when he came up to us in, in our area, you know, you look at a nigga and then you try to see, you know, how the nigga is, if he, if he want to say what's up or whatever like that. But he was cool. He, he recognized us because, you know, he, he was into hip-hop, obviously, as well and knew everything that was going on at the time. So we busted it up Absolutely. for a minute. And, um, and I remember he left and went, you know, around the club doing his thing. And then later that night, he got into, like, an altercation with some cats or whatever. And then uh, he dipped up out of that out of that piece, whatever. But um, and then the illest time that I ever seen him know, which was wow, was I was with this sister and she was doing uh, an article on uh, Dre and Snoop. I mean, on Snoop for uh, Vibe Magazine, Dream Hampton, and they uh, uh, um, the Dog Pound and Snoop was was doing Saturday Night Live. Right, they was the musical guests, so they was in New York. It was buzzing, everybody knew, you know what I'm saying. So, this had, you know, they invited her down to cover it, you know, and, and so I was with her. So, boom, we go to NBC, we go up in the building and everything like that, and uh, we go to the uh, studios and we down in the bottom where the dressing rooms is, and it smell like wild weed and shit in there. Sugar is up now. <laughs> I was I seen Shug and I said, Yo, what's up, Shug? Boom, boom, boom. He said to me, he said, uh, yeah, if there's anything you ever need, you know what I mean, just let me know. And I was like, Okay, you know what I'm saying? At the time I wasn't really digging on what he was saying. They they hadn't hung niggas off of balconies and shit yet, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I wasn't really knowing. So I was just like, All right, cool, cool. So anyway, we chilling downstairs, everybody down there, crowd of niggas, they smoking wild weed, dog pound, snoop, boom, boom, boom. And then the door sw- swings open, right? in this big hallway kind of area. And um, through the door come Pop and Madonna. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, oh. everybody heard these rumors. Yeah, yeah. Everybody heard rumors. Oh, they hanging out, this, this, and that. And boom, they came through a pot, you know, with the smile on. They say, what's up? Talking to everybody, slapping pounds and shit. And I was just like, damn, this nigga really, you know what I'm saying? He, wow. You mean he really do it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that's man. crazy though. That's the that's the interview that Snoop Dogg was talking about on Drink Champs. He was like, "Pop bag Madonna, man. Pop had Madonna, man." That's what he was saying. So you was there that night, then, because he said he was at Saturday Night Live and he seen Pop coming with Madonna. So, damn. Oh, he, he did. I didn't see that Drink Champs. Yeah, that's that night, bro. That's the night, bro. He he came in with her, man. Straight up. Straight uh, up. This was though. Madonna was like popping. You know what I mean? Madonna was still. Like a virgin, you know what I mean? She was uh she was nah, still she wasn't popping, like no bro. virgin no more, but I but she was still <laughs> she was still popping though. Nah, she was still popping yeah. at the time. Like it was it was like, yeah, it was at the not the height of it, but it was like she was still very famous. She might even have been putting joints out still, you know what I mean? So Right, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, it was a trip. Niggas tripped out though. You know what I mean? It was just a trip because you know, it ain't like it is now. Niggas didn't really cross over into the pop world, even for romance and all that kind of shit. Not to say that niggas wasn't doing what they was doing or whatever, but, like, stepping out with Madonna, like, that shit was wild, bro. Everybody bugged off of that, you know? Yeah, no doubt. Definitely, that's some different shit right there.